Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Boosa 526 on database management. Uh, this lecture is going to be about the uh, introduction to data and database management. Uh, before starting the textbook, uh, we have to cover several uh, materials because the textbook uh, is based on the assumption that you know a, a lot about uh, database management and that how to design a database. And then uh, the textbook just addresses how to implement the database and design the tables in the, inside of the database. But before starting the textbook, we need to cover up the, a lot of the materials, including the definition of the database and how to design a database. <coughs> uh, for we, ha we are going to have at least two lectures about the uh, introduction to the database and how to design a database. So let's start with uh, some basic definition of the data database and some other uh, terms that you may not know. So let's start by the basic definitions of the data. Uh, we call data as a stored representation of the meaningful objects and events. Uh, basically, data is uh, anything that is storable. It could be the number of the students, or it could be very complex things like the videos or presentation and so on. So data can be categorized into two sections, two groups. Uh, we call them structured and unstructured. Structured means the number, text, characters, dates, and so on. But the unstructured the documents, maps, video, presentation, image, are in the group of the unstructured data. And most of the time we have data versus information. Uh, data is a, information is a, a process data. Whenever you do some manipulation on the data, you get information. For example, you have the uh, GPA of the several the students in the class and you want to get the average of G these GPAs. Uh, the average of the GPAs is the information and G GPA itself is the data. So this is a distinguishing between the information and data. Then the second term that we have is the database. We call we define the database as an organized collection of the data that uh, most of the time is uh, the data is uh, related to a specific process in the organization, like uh, uh, in the accounting. Most, for example, it starts from one department and and goes to another department and so on, or in the process of the purchasing material from different. Uh, suppliers, uh, uh, for example, supplier A provides some uh, products, so we define, we store specific information about uh, suppliers and the materials that they are uh, sending to us. So, <coughs> and then in the database, sometimes we we, uh, we save the process data or information. So database can have data and information. Uh, this is an example of the data. For example, you see some characters and some numbers. Uh, you know, the first one, the first column is, uh, uh, we may guess that this is the last name and first name, this first column. But we have no idea about the second column which could be a social security number or uh, students' ID numbers in the campus or whatever, but we don't have any information about it. So this is the example of the data. So data could be characters, data, uh, or integer numbers or dates. So this is just a specific example of the data. Now let's say we add more information to it. So it's turns out that these are the names and then we have these are the IDs and then we add more information to it so it says the major of the student so it turned out 
that this is a class roster and uh, the students are registered for the specific course which is the business policy MGT 500 in the semester of the spring 2005 2015 and uh, the section 2 of the course and um, this is the name of the students and their ID and their major and GPA so you see this is a clear in, uh, data and we have a better understanding of this presentation. So we call this form, but uh, uh, later we are going to discuss about these forms a little bit more, how to convert these forms to the relational data and how to store this kind of forms that we have an effective uh, saving of the data of these forms. <coughs> and. Uh, uh, if we look at the previous lecture, previous slide, and you see if I do some manipulation and get the information about the students and classify them based on the percentage of the students based on their major, uh, then I have a uh, data. So for example, if I get the percent of the enrollment by the major in this course based on their major, then uh, I have a data, for example, be, right now this figure shows that, for example, 15% of the students from, uh, they are from information system, 25% from accounting, and 20% from management. So this figure shows uh, more, uh, it shows this is a conversion of the, converting the data to the information because we are doing some manipulation and we are getting some insight from the scattered data, from the un seemingly unrelevant data, and we are converting to meaningful things. So this is uh, converting the data to information. And similarly, this is the also <coughs> the, the number of the students based on the enrollment of the students based on the number of, based on each year. So also we have uh, several more definitions for the information. For example, information is a knowledge derived from the data, or information is a process data, or human cognitive st skills are used to drive information by adding value to data. These are the all uh, other definition of the information. So this is just, you see, most of the definition is just is uh, Basically, they are saying that understanding from the data can, can be uh, is a information. So processing a data provides more understanding about the data, or this term is the first definition is a knowledge derived from the data. So all of them are focused on the getting an information, getting a knowledge from a data. So all of them are the, you know. Uh, different kind of the definition of the data and uh, we define uh, four characteristics for the data that data should be accurate timely and relevant in the context and analysis and the words it's cost accurate means that uh, whenever we have a data it should be accurate and uh, true uh, for example suppose we want to uh, invest and if we do not if we don't know the amount of money we have, then our investment is going to be turned out disaster. If I, uh, so the information should be accurate. I should know the exact value of that. And then it should be timely manner. Whenever I need the information, whenever I need the data, it should be available. Otherwise, uh, it's not uh, effective. And then it should be relevant. Whenever I need the data from a specific field I should have that uh, I cannot have uh, the data unrelevant data uh, because it's useful and then it should be worse of the cost you know whenever the information is costly uh, a lot of people are in, uh, spending their time and hours to get the information to store the information so the data should be worth of the, its cost. It shouldn't be just a unrelevant, randomly generated data that it doesn't have any value. So these are the values that we are um, 
these are the criteria that we when we trying to get the data we have to uh, focus <coughs> so we have one more term we call metadata metadata is basically is the, is a dictionary that describe every element of the data for example uh, their properties and their uh, uh, type of the data for example the data set that we uh, showed for the cor course roster is that its element of the course that figure is explained for example course is the uh, alpha alphanumeric uh, number and alphabet are combined together and the length of it is 30 characters there is mean or, mean or max for that one and it just shows the course ID and the name of the course and and uh, then we have the section which is its type is integer and the length of it is one and the minimum it, it could be is one and the maximum is nine so there is nine section for possibly nine section for each course and then we have the semester which is alphanumeric and the length of is 10 there is no minimum or maximum for that one and it shows the semester and year and then we have the name which is alphanumeric and the length of its 30 characters and then it shows the student name and id is the student ssn so it's an integer and it has length of it nine so in a sense the meta metadata is a dictionary that explain every property of the data that we are using later we define these items as the attributes or pa properties uh, which define the columns of the tables in the database uh, we will talk about this later but in a sense metadata is a useful one because everyone can understand the data it doesn't matter where they work or which department of the companies they are in so uh, this having a metadata uh, explain everything and they can understand uh, have a better understanding about the type of the data we are using in the database okay uh, <coughs> Before well, before inventing the database, the file processing was uh, one of the major uh, services. Uh, you know, all of this, we had uh, several different uh, systems. Each of them was working separately. They had their own databases and uh, they had uh, their own programs. You know, for example, we had the depart order department had its own system accounting system department had its own uh, program and then payroll department had its own uh, uh, its own program in these systems each of the department has had their own systems and they try to store the information as much as they needed and uh, in this case we had several problems first of all the department you know the different software different programs uh, they could not interact with each with each other for example you cannot see any connection between the software that order department is using and the accounting or the accounting and the payroll department so in this case you see for example we may have a multiple uh, duplicate information for example you see the customer files and uh, is used in the accounting as well as the order department so each of these uh, departments are paying extra cost to say the same exact data which if they could share as a one database they, they could save a lot of money similarly they have the invoice pricing file inventory pricing file which is both of the department order and accounting uh, they are using so this file processing which is uh, uh, separate systems and they do not talk to each other has several problems one of them is that 
uh, each program, each department because is using they they develop the program based on their needs without considering other department the programs are specifically designed for them so the program is kind of data dependent so the, the metadata of the each software each program is uh, different than others so when we want to transfer one data from another it's going to be very difficult thing and uh, as we just talked, we have a duplication of the data. Like uh, you can see that we have uh, inventory files which has been duplicated in it's saved in the different systems. But uh, while they could share the file and uh, reduce the re duplication of the data, and you know the sharing is one of the another problem with the file processing system so they do not talk to each other they don't have any connection then they don't have a uh, data sharing and then if they want to do anything because if they want to improve their program because there has been developed uh, by their needs uh, it takes a lot of time to improve the program and then the maintenance also uh, it's uh, very costly for this kind of prob uh, programming. Uh, data dependency is a major problem with these systems. The, the problem with the data dependency is that each program, they should maintain their own database and own data and they because they are using a different metadata uh, and they need to have a different codings and different application of the data and uh, transferring one data to another is a different thing. Even when you want to enter a data, add a new data or insert a new data, you have, we need to have a different protocol, different processing routines and then we have the lack of the control on the data and uh, there is no standard uh, format of the files so these are the problem with the data dependency and then there <coughs> uh, with the data redundancy is that we have assigning uh, we are wasting space because we are duplicating the data we are saving same data in the different places and then uh, it's uh, headaches for the maintaining the duplicate data and then uh, if we change anything, uh, it's going to cause an inconsistency of the data and then uh, it's going to mess up with the data integrity, which is uh, one of the principles of the database management. Whenever we change anything in any places, it should reflect in all the places. And then uh, uh, having a file processing does not satisfy these constraints. So. Uh, these are the problem we have with the file processing. So the solution for these problems was using a database approach. In the database approach, we have a repository which is maintain all the metadata, all the explanation for every attribute, every data file that we are using is explained in one place. We call them central repository and then data are managed by the agents one person one agent is controlling all the data and then when we want to st re uh, store the data we are following a format which is standard and uh, everyone follows that one however the, this database approach needs uh, a system a uh, database management system DBA, DBMS. So we are going to talk this uh, about this DBMS in shortly. Uh, DBMS is a software that used to create, maintain, and provide the controlled access to the database. Uh, in other in a, in other words, this is a central software that uh, do every change to the database. It insert the data delete the data, update the data, but everything is done through this system. And 
every uh, remember the example we had for the file processing which which had three different system ordering invoicing and payroll so all of them are using the same system and they are all the data are stored in one central database uh, which includes inventory order pricing and customer data and then one software is uh, one system is responsible to make the changes then whenever the changes are done uh, the changes are reflected in everywhere and then we have the latest information without any without losing a data integrity so this is the advantage of the database management system, uh, having a database approach. So let's have a definition of the database approach because it's different from the database uh, file processing. We have a different element for this one. First of all, we have data models. In a sense, data models are the graphical diagrams that uh, shows the relation of the data. The data, as we said, is coming from the processes in the inside of the organizations. We have two different data models. One of them is an enterprise data model, uh, which is a high level of the data, it just shows the entities and the relation of, uh, of these entities. And then we have project data model, which has a more detailed view and uh, we are going to show each of this in a minute. So, so this is an enterprise data model which is has customer order and product. And then the relation between the customer and order is that customer places orders and orders are is order is placed by a customer. So this is uh, called data enterprise data model, but when we have the project level data model, um, we have more information about uh, each entities. The customers, orders, and products are entities. We later will define these terms, but uh, each of these entities are the objects or event that we want to store the information about them. So customer as an entity has a customer ID, customer name, that places the order that each order has order ID and the person who has all placed the orders and the, the date that he, he or she puts the order. So because this model has a more detail we call this project level or sometimes ERD. So we are going to talk to them in a later but uh, for time being this is the difference between the enterprise data model and project data model. And then we have the entities that we call, a, it's a noun for describing a person, place, object, event, or concept that organi organization needs to store the data. Entities are essentially uh, agents or roles that we wanna, they play roles in the uh, process of the organization. Uh, they are important agents that uh, in the each process they have they have a important role. For example, in this system, customer order and product are uh, entities, uh, and because customer places order and order is based on the products, so these are the entities, and we. Knowing the entities is very important because identifying a wrong item as an entity is going to be a, a big mistake because later we use this ERD diagrams, these entities to create a relations or tables that uh, in the database. So it's very important we uh, know and identify the correct entities. Later we have the relationship between the entities. Uh, entities can have three type of the relationship in the term of the, uh, they can have a one to many and many to many or one to one to. So we are gonna define these relationships uh, later in more details and the, uh, 
but for time being just uh, accept this definition when we have the relational database which is the relation between the entities uh, and then each entity has a identifier or a key which work which is a unique characteristic that a unique number that defines uh, each record each uh, entities so in a sense key is the <coughs> an attribute and property that a property that specifically identify each sample of each entity we will discuss about more about these items this terminology later but these are the elements of the database approach so each database has a data model entity relationship in between the model and relational database so as we just talked this is a da two data models uh, in enterprise data model and project level data models uh, the customer uh, places order but not necessary every customer places order so uh, and each customer may place one or several orders so this shows that this relation shows one to many because each uh, customer may put uh, more than one so we call this this is a one to many relations and then sometimes uh, each order has may contain uh, several products several order line and each products may have used may has uh, order line so we call this many to many relations notice that uh, this is uh, normalized and uh, the order and because it's simply we can say that each order may have several products and several products may be used in uh, several orders so this uh, connection between the order and product is uh, many 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 to many relationship but in the normalization we add a, a new relation new as a linkage between this product and order entities that uh, it convert many to many to two relation of one to many so you are going to learn this uh, in the normalization process but uh, this is the nature of order of the nature of the many to many relationship and then this is a, a general more general in enterprise model of the example we, we just talked so we just showed the customer order and um, but we have more entities that they are in the game so, as we just talked database adva database approach has uh, plenty advantages one of them is that the, the program and data are independent and uh, data we don't have a uh, inconsistency anymore we have a shared data data sharing is improved and then we have the standards and the data qualities are improved so you know the maintenance the cost of the maintenance is re reduced and then data access 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 to the data is uh, improved so these are the pretty much uh, self-exploratory advantage of the da database approach now let's talk about the database uh, environment and what are the uh, key elements in the database environment this figure shows the component of the database information database environment uh, we have database database management system repository and uh, we have user interface and application programs and data models and then we have users which end users and system developers and data and database uh, administration we have defined the database as a organized 
uh, collection of the data and then the database, the software that connects to the database and do the uh, manipulation, insert and change on the database. The repository is the central uh, the position that uh, uh, store the data explanation the meta meta files and metadata are stored in the repository and then uh, data modeling and uh, uh, design tools are the automated tools that used to design the database and application programs these uh, tools help to create the data models and in some case they can help the automatically generate the codes uh, you're gonna in the SQL, in uh, MySQL Workbench, if you use the ERD, you can uh, plot the ERD diagrams. We will talk about later, but if you draw the ERD data, ERD, and then you can generate the database model. And then we have a user interface, uh, <coughs> which is a menus, like the Windows, uh, you have a buttons that press and they do uh, some work so that makes you easier to use uh, uh, softwares uh, so <clears throat> then we have the application programs which is uh, they provide the functionality to use the to use in the company the uh, for example the order processing or the the other systems that we uh, just talked about uh, in the example of in the example of the file processing those are the application programs and then we have the end user end users that they use uh, they are the basically those are the people that use a user interface uh, the bottoms the, and uh, they uh, use the information uh, they can create uh, the information and the uh, enter the inter information to the database and then we have the system developers that they usually develop the system and then database data and database administration administrators are the people who are responsible in the managing the database in terms of the creating a database and uh, giving access to the different people in the system so you can uh, these are the details explanation of the each of the terms of in the each of the components in the database environment um, uh, so far we just talked about the database and the component of the database uh, in order to implement the database we have two main uh, methods one of them is the systematic develop, development life cycle, STLC, and uh, another one is a proto, prototyping database methodology. And we have a bunch of other methods that uh, is not very much important. We just covered these two methods, which are very important. Uh, the first one is a kind of systematic way, uh, you know. It, uh, it has uh, six steps. Uh, it starts from the planning and then uh, the purpose of the planning is that uh, we need to understand whether, whether we need this database to be designed at all. Uh, the purpose, so uh, do we need this database at all? <clears throat> and then uh, by conducting the study, we say, okay, we need this uh, the database so we need to do some more studies and in terms of the database activities uh, we designed the uh, enterprise modeling and the uh, conceptual data modeling so remember the enterprise modeling which uh, we did we had uh, uh, identified entities but uh, for time being just assume we know those uh, details we will talk about the ERDs entities later in more detail. Then we have the, the second step, uh, step phase of the system development life cycle, SDLC, is the analysis. The purpose of analysis is that 
we do the requirement analysis and uh, design the structuring so in this system in this phase we do the functional system specification what are the requirements for the functional system and in terms of the database activity we do the conceptual data modeling then we have the logical data logical design which is uh, we develop the ERD in this system and in terms of the database activity we just uh, de we design a logical database which has all the forms we use and also we make sure that we have a data integrity and uh, security So in terms of the database activity, we design the logical database or sometimes we call them relational data model. And then we have the physical data, physical design, which is uh, we do the programs and data structures and those stuff and technologies. And then in terms of the database activities, we design the DBMS and the physical database design. The next step is uh, implementation that uh, in this step we use uh, SQL to design and implement the database in the software and uh, you know we design the uh, each tables and the relation of the tables and the, and then the maintenance which is the last step is uh, just we make sure that database is working properly and then we if in case we need to do some repairs, we do that. And uh, if we need some improving the database, we need to improve it. So uh, in terms of the database, just we need to have some maintenance of the database and checking the every function of it while it is working properly. Uh, another method is the prototyping the database. In this step, uh, we conceptually design the data model. In the prototyping database methodology is uh, very quick, so we identify the uh, problem and then uh, develop the prototype, and which is uh, uh, including the log logical database design, and then we implement it. Then if it's needed, we do the improvement uh, upon the database. So we talked about ERD, uh, which is an entity relation di diagram a lot. So in term, in this, from now on, we just want to talk about uh, each component of the ERD and how to de develop the ERD diagram. Uh, we have uh, entity symptoms, uh, uh, which is shown here. So we have three type of the entities. Uh, they are either strong or weak or associative entities. And then we have attributes. Attributes, as we defined, are the properties of each entities. For example, uh, each entity has a, an identifier, a partial identifier, and then some we have uh, properties that define the, each entity. We, so we can divide it in several type of attributes. Then we have the relation between <coughs> entities. Uh, some of the relations are within the entity. Some of the relations are between two different entities. And sometimes the number of uh, relations could be one or more than one. So we are going to uh, talk this about the symbols in more detail from that on. So entity is kind of name is a name for describing a person, place, object, or event, or a, or a concept that organization wants to store uh, data. As I just talked, uh, entities is a agents or kind of information that uh, in, uh, the organization is looking for. And they want to store. So the example of the person could be student, employee, customer, and patient. And the 
example of that place could be store, warehouse, estate, and so on. And uh, event could be sales, registration, renewal, and so on. And the concept could be account and course, and so on. And remember that we are these uh, uh, modeling a process inside of the organization. So pretty much <coughs> depends on the uh, business core and business process of each organization. So for it may be different from one organization to another. Uh, so it's required to pay attention to the detail of the process, business process inside of each organization. And then uh, each entity should be an object that have many instances in the database. For example, students. Uh, students, we have several students in, in uh, each department or on the campus. So student can be an object. Also, it can be composed of multiple attributes. It should have several properties that we can uh, store information about them. And then um, the, we cannot use a uh, user of the database as an uh, entity like the accountant or manager. So those are the inform or output of the system, output of the database system, like a report. Or we cannot use this kind of, uh, we, we cannot use them as an entity. So this is very important to pay attention to this. Uh, right now, uh, this is an example of the inappropriate use of the entity. You can see the treasure receives from system expense reports. So treasures and expense report are improper because they are user of the system. One of them is a treasure, is a user of the system, and the report is a system output. So we cannot use them, but account yeah, and expense are the <coughs> true concept they can be used. So each account is charged by expenses. And we have two strong versus weak entity. Strong entities are uh, they are in the system without depending on another entities and weak entities are those are who are exist because of uh, and other entities. For example, uh, we have employee as a strong entity in an organization and the family of the employee are dependent, are dependent on the employee. So family is a weak entity because they are exist in the system because employees exist in the system. So weak, de weak entity depends on the strong entity. And strong entity has its own identifier. Uh, most of the time, we show the identifier by underlined with a single line. But uh, weak entities doesn't have a identifier. They have a partial identifier. And uh, we put the, in the representation in order to show the, to show the weak entity, uh, we use a double bar. Um, uh, double lines as a partial ident identifier. Pay attention to this, uh, uh, that weak entities has a two rectangle inside of it, and, but the strong entity has just one rectangle. And so this is, a, this is how we distinguish the strong and weak entities from each other. And this is a, another example. So we have employee. So employee ID is a identifier because we know if we know the employee ID, we can get the, every information about the specific uh, employee. And then each employee has a dependent. Uh, so this partial, this double lines, uh, this dependent is a weak entity and it has a partial identifier because uh, which is the uh, first name, middle name, and last name of this dependent 
is known as the uh, identifier of this dependent. And remember that dependent is a weak entity because it exists in the system because the because of the employee. If we remove the employee, uh, dependent itself also goes away from the system. So the dependent exists because of the employee, and this is this shows that dependent is a weak entity. Okay. Another term we have is the attributes. Attributes are the property or characteristic of entities. Uh, uh, for example, each student, each employee in this one has a name and ID. The name is a property of the employee, so this is the one attribute of the employee. And ID is a, another attribute of ID attribute of the employee and here we have a date of birth of the dependent which is another attribute of the uh, dependent it's explain more information more detail about the entity if we want to classify the attributes we have required versus optional attributes and then we have simple versus composite attributes we have single valued versus multi valued attributes. Then we have stored versus derived attributes. And then we have identifier attributes. So we need to talk about these attributes in more details. Uh, this is a, this shows the detail of the entity student, student as the entity. We call this student. And then each student has an ID, so this is one attribute. The second attribute is the student name. The, sec the third one is the home address of the student, and home city, home state, and home zip code and major. So these are the attributes that explain the student. And uh, then uh, sometimes some of the data are not required. For example, the major of the students you see it's uh, marked as optional but optional is that means we can have them or we cannot uh, we can not have them it's uh, optional you, but for other information which is other attributes are required we have to have a information for them uh, we cannot leave blank the name of students in the database we have to have those kind of information and uh, pay attention to student we call this student as the entity type but uh, we have two examples here Michael Grant and Melissa Kraft we call this uh, instance um, because these are the samples of student type these are the two different students so we call them instance uh, entity instance and we call student as an entity type so entity type and entity instance are a little different I mean instance represent an example of the entity type so here the purpose of this one is just explaining the optional versus required entity and then we have composite attribute uh, it's an attribute that has many uh, meaningful has many meaningful component parts. Like uh, here, we have address as a composite attribute, which has a street address, city, state, postal code, and so on. So we call this uh, composite attributes because it's made of several components that we can break them in the smaller attributes like the we can for example we can break down this address as a street address of the employee city of the employee and state of employee and postal code of the employees so because it's possible to decompose this one into several simpler attributes or atomic attributes just that records only one meaningful information 
uh, we call this as a composite attribute and then we have multi-valued attribute sometimes some of the attributes can ha store several values in it for example the number of the skills that each employee may have or number of the certification that an employee has for example let's say the employee can uh, this employee uh, and a specific employee may have have uh, writing skills and uh, uh, listening skills so it has two skills so this attribute can store two different type of information and we have uh, derived information derived attribute that means that we got this information we calculate this information from other attributes like year of the employees then we can get it from the date the date that this employee has been hired so this is a derived attributes pay attention to the uh, this skill which we uh, we use a uh, uh, this mark to show that this attribute is a multi-value but for the derived with derived attribute we use this notation so this is very important to distinguish this kind of attributes from NAR uh, because once we have at we have ERD diagrams we have next step which is a normalization and in that step we know we need to know each type of the attributes very well otherwise we may end up with the incomplete or wrong database design so the next term is identifier or key uh, identifier or key is an attribute that can explain uniquely identify a individual instance of each entity type for example if i have a bunch of students and i want to recognize them i can use ssn or campus-wide id as a identifier of the students that means that if i know identifier i can get only one students not more than one student so that's the key for identifier sometimes identifier can be a simple one like uh, ssn ssn just identifier uh, one is a one simple uh, attribute that identify a person but sometimes it's possible that we have a composite identifier we will discuss about this ident composite identifier later but whenever we have a many to many relationship and we create a linkage table uh, this composite identifier will appear and also we have a candidate identifier or those are attributes that uh, can be identifier and they satisfy all of the requirements uh, we will talk about how we use the uh, identifier and what's the uh, this difference between the candidate identifier and identifier in the normalization which is going to be the second presentation the most important part is that identifier never can be a null null is a terminology that we use in the computer program to be say empty so identifier never can be empty or null so to have a the criteria for identifier is that the identifier never change its value in uh, the history of the database for example ssn of a person never changes regardless of each age or employment also identifier cannot be null and then um, never use an intelligent identifier like the locations or uh, locations or something that is gonna change over the period of the time and it should be if we have a very complex identifier it's better to use a simple keys and or use a composite keys that makes more sense so identifiers most of them uh, in the tables we, we show them by underlined 
port for example in this case uh, the entity type student has a student ID as a identifier but sometimes uh, which is a simple simple identifier but sometimes we are required we need to have a composite identifier like the flight ID which is made of the two attributes uh, flight number and date of the flight so this is a composite identifier so the next one is the cardinality of the relationship we talked how the mm, entities are related to one entity to another entity so we have three type of the cardinality from relationship one of them is one to one and another one is one to many and many to many one to one means that each entity in a relationship has exactly one related entity and one is one to many is that uh, one side of the relation have many related entities but the other side just have only one in related entities and many many is that many to many is that both sides have uh, many uh, related entities in both sides so and then this is a cardinality and then we have degree which is a degree is uh, how how many entity types are involved in the relationship uh, if uh, we have unary binary ternary and so on uh, a higher number of the entities can be involved in a relationship but most of the time uh, two three entities are the maximum we can see in the text the unary is the relation that appears inside of one entity types binary is that two different entities are related to each other and ternary is the case that three different entities are connected or related to each other the example of the unary is that one person can ma marry to only one person so this is one to one you know it's a, so this is example of the degree and cardinality of the relations in term of the cardinality is one to one and in term of the degree is the unary and then each employee can manage several employees and so this is an example of the one too many also another example of one to one is um, each team's stance after the team then we have the binary relations so the binary remember that the binary relationship is the type of relation that happens between two different entity type for example employee is assigned to a parking space and each, each employee is assigned to one parking spot and one parking spot is assigned to one employee so the relation is one to one sometimes uh, we can have one to many and many to many a product line contains many products which you know the crew fruit here represents uh, represents represents the many um, relationship and this one represents the one and then we have many to many relationship which students can register for many courses and many courses can be registered by many students so this is a, a really many to many relationships these are the example of the binary relationship and then we have a ternary relationship which happens between the three entities type entity types uh, we have this for example we have vendor part and warehouses and uh, vendor x supplies part c to warehouse y uh, so one action uh, all of these entities are connected simultaneously and by the shipment which happens from the vendor part to a specific warehouse and 
pay attention that this is all many too many too many and uh, later we discuss that how we can convert to this ternary and higher number of the entities the relation of entities to a simpler one uh, in the normalization process so Another terminology that we use in the relation is optional versus mandatory. If the uh, minimum number is mi zero, then means that's uh, optional. And if the minimum is more than zero or one or more, then we can it's mandatory. Um, for example, patient. You, you can see a double bar here so the first one is uh, here the closer to the entity is the number of the cardinality and the second one is the optionality or mandatory of the type of the relations so each patient uh, sends to one or many uh, patient history or in another word each patient has recorded one or many patient history but each patient story is only and only related to one patient so this is the way we have uh, uh, translate this for example mark has one visit and sarah has uh, two visits so visit but each of these visits are related to one per person uh, one patient so the relation between patient and patient history is one to many and both sides is mandatory here we have um, the explanation of that so the sign closer to the entity shows the cardinality and the sign closer further away from the entity shows the mandatory or optionality of that this crew for uh, one hatch is uh, mandatory many and if we had a circle and crew for we have uh, th that represents the optional many and this circle and hatch shows the optional one uh, another example we already talked about this example then we have here this is uh, many and then the, that this is a cardinality and then we have uh, optionally or mandatory which is a mandatory here and then this one is a mandatory and this is a cardinality to many so one side is both side is many to many but one is mandatory one is optional so uh, each employee can be assigned to zero or many projects and but each project is assigned to one or many employees that means for example here we have a bunch of people's bunch of employees and bunch of projects so these are the project BPR TQMs and so on and you see that Rose has been assigned to two project Tom has been assigned to three project Debbie is just to one project but you see PT and Haiti is not assigned to any project so that means uh, assigning an employee to a project is optional but each project should be assigned to an employee so uh, this is a mandatory side and this is an optional side because each employee may be employees may be not assigned to a specific project so this means it's an optional but because employees can be assigned to many projects we have the many to many and each person may have and each different people's different employees can may work on the same project we have many to many and that's the way we how interpret this diagram sometimes the, the, we have we can have both optional so each person is married to a person both sides is one one to one and optional for example consider this example we have several people here some males some 
females and Mac and Kathy they are married and Elias and um, Elias and uh, Shirley are married but you see two people further down they are not married so that's uh, optional one to one and then we have associative entities that as this kind of entities happens as a relationship with the attributes here is an example between the employee and course so you see the cardinality is many too many but we have the, the, each employee completes the several course and each course can be completed by several employees and if you want to uh, record the date of the completion then we need to add one entity here as the associative entity so the associative entity is uh, kind of uh, record the uh, relation to the entity relation to the attribute and then the date of the completion so we create a new entity which is this the certificate and uh, we define the uh, certificate number as an identifier of this and then the date of the completion pay attention to what happens here we have many many relation both sides become many and then once we add uh, this entity as an associative associative entity uh, both it becomes one to many and one to many from both sides so we convert many to many into two relation of the one to many we will discuss how we get this one later in the normalization process but this is very important that you understand how we convert to one to many many to many to two one to many relation and again uh, associative entity uh, you see this uh, curved rectangle uh, is not a square rectangle uh, the, sh the edges are a little uh, curved but uh, for the strong entities we have uh, uh, sharp edges basically associative entities are those entities that we want to uh, show the relationship with the attributes like uh, date of the completion or uh, similar properties At the end of the, this presentation, we have several, like two, three examples that I suggest you to try to uh, solve those ERD diagrams. It's going to help you to have a better understanding about the entity relationship. So this is the end of the lecture. Uh, have a good day.